Good morning. My name is Judy Scrow, and as your MP in Ottawa, I wanted to take a moment to bring you up to date on what is happening in the nation's capital. Today is federal budget day. After weeks of stalling and foot dragging, the Conservatives are finally emerging to tell Canadians their plans for social spending, jobs, and economic growth. Unfortunately for many in my riding and in middle class households across Canada, we already know that the Harper government has no intention of helping working families, seniors, students, or those looking for a job. In fact, if the past is any indication, I have every reason to believe that the Conservatives will continue to ignore the problems plaguing the middle class in favour of the wealthiest Canadians. You see, what Stephen Harper doesn't want to admit is that household incomes have stalled while the cost of living has continued to skyrocket. Many are struggling to make ends meet and as a result household debt is on the rise. This means too many are exposed to even more financial damage if they lose their job, face illness, or need to miss work to care for a sick parent or child. Despite all of this, Stephen Harper is refusing to lend a hand. That is to say, he is refusing to lend a hand to those who need it the most. The Conservatives have already announced that they will spend $2 billion to give a tax break to just 13% of the population, and most getting that break are already in the upper income brackets. Stephen Harper has increased the age at which a senior can collect the old age security pension, something that takes $13,000 out of the pockets of the average future senior. Then, to compensate for the money grab, the Conservatives have promised to increase the tax-free savings account limits from $5,500 to $11,000 each year. This may sound good to those with $11,000 extra to put in the bank, but it only hurts those without the extra cash to put it away. In 2009, 64% of Canadians contributed their maximum to the TFSA. but. By 2012, only 16% of Canadians contributed the full limit. This decline shows that working Canadians are spending their money on groceries, housing and other essentials of daily life. There is no extra money to stow away in the bank because middle class incomes are not keeping pace with household expenses. This is even worse if you are one of the 1,500 people who lost their job at Future Shop, one of the 17,000 who lost their job at Target or one of the 400,000 who have lost their manufacturing sector job since 2008. These are the people who don't have an extra $11,000 to put in the bank each year. Doubling the TFSA limits hurts middle class families because the change will cost Canadians $1.3 billion in 2015 alone, which means there will not be enough money left in the federal treasury to invest in infrastructure, to bolster health care or educational supports or to help create new jobs. Yet again, Stephen Harper is showing that the Conservative Economic Action Plan is nothing more than a way of funneling taxpayer dollars into flashy advertising during the Super Bowl. Yet again, he is proving that Conservatives are more concerned about prosperity around boardroom tables, even if that means those sitting around the kitchen tables are stuck with the bills. All of this paints a picture of a federal conservative government that is desperately out of touch with the real needs of middle class Canadians and those who are working so hard to get there. This is why I am a liberal and it is why I will continue to work to see that Stephen Harper knows what it is like to be handed a pink slip after the next election. Canada needs a government that is prepared to put people first and I know Justin Trudeau will lead that kind of government. Justin Trudeau has already committed that a Liberal government will cancel Stephen Harper's reckless $2 billion income splitting tax giveaway to the wealthy. A Liberal government will reverse the Conservative attack on seniors by rolling back to 65, the age at which a senior can get OAS. And the Liberal government will again make the success and prosperity of the manufacturing sector in Ontario a top priority. Today's budget is less about an economic action plan and more about a political statement by a government desperately trying to win the next election. This is just a snapshot of what is to come and I urge you not to be fooled. 
If you would like to hear more, please contact my Finch Avenue office. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.